Hello my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Today for the Sew With Me video I have chosen a very beginner friendly pattern. It's the Marilyn Big Pouch pattern by Imaz Patterns. You can find her on Facebook and I will be sewing this uh, large option of the zipper pouch for a donation that I will be making this weekend in the weekly auction donation group uh, in memory of Gwen Edwards. It's a group on Facebook that uh, I like to support. So this pouch will go straight to that uh, auction this weekend who will benefit um, the nephew of a dear friend of mine. This pouch is super user friendly, I find. It has just a couple of zippers and minimum hardware and I have called it the no interfacing pouch. I'm using vinyl for my main piece and waterproof canvas for the lining so um, I am not interfacing it at all like there is zero interfacing on this it's weird for a bag making but hey it works I don't want a very puffy lofty pouch I want a more um, uh, soft not very structured pouch so that's why I've decided to go ahead and skip the interfacing all together for this. Everything that I'm using is from uh, Wizardry Stitchery and Crafts on Facebook. As always, everything will be linked here in the description of the video. The vinyl is their waterfall yellow option and uh, unicorn mane. I'm using the zipper tape from Wizardry. Is um, The zipper tape is the unicorn main that coordinates very well with the vinyl and with the thread that I have on my machine right now. I am using Tex 80, which is uh, custom dyed um, heavyweight uh, sewing thread, Melissa calls it, that uh, coordinates with both the vinyl and the zipper. And of course, for the zipper pulls, I am using um, two rainbows, two rainbow zippers. So, so let's get started. We're going to start by sewing the front zipper pouch. That one is um, a rectangle piece and so are the top and the bottom and the lining of this pouch. So it's important that you keep your uh, uh, pieces marked with the pattern piece or you can write with a water soluble pen on the back of them. This yellow part is my uh, uh, front pocket. It would take very well to like an embroidery or an accent. Uh, I'm using just yellow because I want uh, to look like, you know, sunshine in a ray of, of rainbows. I'm also using zipper by the yard. Uh, so I will need to be cutting this piece to the correct size. There are two zippers needed for this pattern. And because I'm using zipper by the yard, I'm just uh, using a one yard and simply cut it to what I need. This one will just match the long edge of the zipper of the pocket panel. So let's cut that off to the correct size and stitch them right sides together, matching the raw edge of the um, zipper and of course the panel. This pattern follows a half an inch seam allowance but for the zipper, we will be sewing this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Wherever you have a zipper and using zipper tape makes it very easy to, to stick to that, uh, that guideline. Next step, you want to go ahead and grab your lining piece for uh, the zipper pouch. It's also a rectangle piece. In my case, all the linings are waterproof canvas, so uh, it's easy to distinguish which one is the main and which one is the lining. And you're going to go ahead and sandwich your zipper in between the right sides of the main panel and the zipper um, and the lining. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And of course, you're going to stitch it down. I encourage you to stitch right over the seam allowance 
and the stitching you've done in the previous step. This will guarantee a constant seam allowance. This thread sews so beautifully. I mean, it's gorgeous. And uh, it comes in a one pound spool. So that's why I kind of splurge and use it for construction too. But if you want to be more frugal with this gorgeous tape, just use it for top stitching. I'm going to top stitch right now, but my laziness to frugal ratio <laughs> is not that great. So I'm, I'm definitely more lazy than I am frugal. So I'm stitching the whole bag with this beautiful thread and I have no regrets. But just look how beautifully it's going to top stitch. You're gonna hear me awe and awe all throughout the videos. I cannot get enough of this beautiful thread. And it just pops in the on everything. I've used it on black, I've used it on rainbow. Look how gorgeous, just look how beautiful it is. Even on yellow it pops. Can't get more custom than this when you have your your thread custom dyed we are now going to attach the top of the pocket part i left my um, pattern pieces clipped to the fabric or in my case to the vinyl i left them there because um, this top and bottom parts of the pocket can be very easily confused there's a piece b and a piece d the smaller one, the sh I mean the shorter one, goes to the top and that's piece B. So easy to uh, mix them up. Go ahead and uh, match the raw edges of piece B, the bottom. If you're using a directional print, you're going to be matching the bottom raw edge of piece B to the um, second part of the zipper. So the other zipper uh, part of the zipper tape, the one that's not stitched. And of course, you're going to stitch that down with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Easy peasy. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and at the end of all your stitches, especially uh, your construction stitches. You want to have the uh, added safety so nothing unravels. Last step in the construction of the pocket is to add your lining, your pocket bag, and that is a long, big piece. There you go. It was right in front of me. Um, you want to add that to the back of the pocket piece right sides together canvases should be right sides together so you're going to be zippering uh, you're going to be sandwiching the zipper in between the right sides of the canvas in my case the gray so you have your pocket lining and pocket bag right sides together and the zipper at the top and you'll be stitching right on top of the previous stitch with um, quarter of an inch seam allowance and this will create your beautiful beautiful pouch remember to move your zipper when you sew so you can have a straight stitch but don't snag your zipper when you move it move it very slowly if you snag it like so you will uh, just take it off especially if you're using zipper by the by the yard like I am because there are no zipper ends right now at the, where they, I'm going to stitch zipper ends because I don't trust myself <laughs> to make sure I don't lose my zipper, the zipper pull. I've done it plenty of times, but let's top stitch right now. We're going to top stitch the seam allowance towards the top. So towards the um, top part, the rainbow part of that pocket. Beautiful, it is so beautiful. Go 
gorgeous. So now to finish the center of the pattern uh, of the front, you need to add the bottom part, which is the other rectangle piece that I was mentioning before, the, the longer one. So that one will go on the bottom and when you attach it, you will also be closing the zipper pocket bottom uh, bag. The zipper bag, you'll also be closing it when you attach it. So you're going to place your bottom on top of the zipper uh, part, right sides together. So now you will have four layers right there. So you'll have the two layers of vinyl and the two layers of the zipper bag and you'll be stitching through all four of them. So if you're using a domestic sewing machine, I would recommend going very slowly in this case. If you're using an industrial, then you're fine, but uh, you have plenty of layers right there. If you, went, if you go wild like I did with just vinyl and canvas, you will need to give your machine a little break in some cases and take it super, super slow. And it may not be a fan of yours after this bag <laughs> with so much vinyl. And again, we're going to top stitch the seam allowance down. So we're going to top stitch the seam allowance towards the bottom part, in my case, the rainbow part. And that's it for creating the, the center you will now be um, adding the side panels. It's very important that you measure this piece to make sure it is um, nine inches in length. It is a little over in my case. So I'm going to be trimming from the top of the panel instead of a little bit. The pattern suggests to trim a little bit from the top, a little bit from the bottom. I'm just going to be trimming from the top to have somewhat, but not quite, of um, pattern matching. I really cut these pieces randomly because I wanted to save as much of my precious vinyl. I did not uh, line match the front to the back or the sides to the, center because I didn't want to waste any of my precious vinyl. It is a um, hard commodity to find. So we're going to match the straight edge of the two side panel pieces to the center piece that we've just created. And we're going to stitch that down with a half an inch seam allowance. And of course, we repeat it on both sides. And for top stitching, you will top stitch the seam allowance towards the um, side panel pieces to reduce bulk. I, as you can see, I have some excess at the top, so not a big deal. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, remove that right after I top stitch. Easy peasy. It's about a half an inch maybe excess, so you could take a quarter of an inch of the top and a quarter of an inch of the, at the bottom. Uh, it really doesn't make much of a difference. It just will change the location of your panel. I just prefer to remove it from, from the top. This way my top accent piece is a little shorter, but makes no difference. So let's top stitch. Again, we're top stitching with the seam allowance towards the outside. This is looking so pretty. I'm loving that rainbow vinyl. I can't wait for Wizardry to have much more in stock because I have like maybe a 10 by 12 inch piece left. <laughs> I need to make like a very tiny pouch from it. But I do have the other colors. So maybe I'll just use the vinyl, the rainbow for an accent for a different bag and then just sew with uh, the other colors. Because they're the same collection, quote unquote, it's um, the same base, the same waterfall print. So it looks pretty beautiful. All right, so let's start to put the bag together. Right now you should have on your table 
the following pieces a back piece a front piece that has the uh, zipper pocket two lining pieces i'm not adding the optional um, card slot so it's just two lining pieces two zipper tabs and if you're adding the wrist strap you'll have your strap and the connector piece so not much left in the construction grab your zipper and for the large size you need to cut a piece that is 11 inches in length for the medium size i believe it's a little smaller so i've already put my zipper pull i'm using a uh, cute rainbow zipper pull a uh, rainbow rainbow <laughs> zipper pull that's of course from wizardry stitchery i have a link uh, i will link in the uh, description of the video my zipper um, my zipper video where i discuss different kinds of zippers for bag making and i'll show you how to add the zipper pull first let's create the zipper tabs you will be folding towards the inside the raw edges towards the center and then fold again so this way you have no raw edges and it will look something like this if you're using woven i would highly encourage you to press this to hold it in place but because i'm using vinyl i can't really uh, press it so that's why i'm holding it with my fingers and just slide your zipper inside all the way you're going to top stitch right on top of those folded lines so you're going to have five layers two of vinyl then one of a zipper then two more of vinyl so if you're using a domestic machine go very slow but i do recommend using woven for the tabs don't um, even interface just plain woven tabs would work much nicer in your domestic sewing machine than the vinyl I mean, you can try the vinyl, I won't stop you, but if you want to make your life easier, using woven would help. We're going to repeat the same thing for the other side of the zipper. Again, fold towards the center and then fold over once more and insert the zipper end in the zipper tab. Try to keep the zipper, uh, because that's the part that opens, try to keep it as closed as possible on the zipper teeth as close to each other as, as possible don't stitch it with like the zipper really wide open so it has a nicer finish that's one of my tips and do make sure that you uh, back stitch at the beginning and at the end while you're creating your zipper All right, so let's add the zipper tape to the main pieces. Your uh, zipper tape will go right sides toward together with the main fabric. The construction right now is pretty similar to what we did with uh, the pocket. So right sides together, center your zipper tape to um, the front panel. You can do that simply by finding the centers or using your pattern pieces. Uh, for the back at least it would work. For, and it should work for the front too if you use the pattern piece for the back, just to mark the centers. But it's easier than to find my papers to just mark it by folding it in half. And when you pin it in place, you should have about a little over half an inch on each side um, you should have it um, without the tape that will be uh, helpful when we attach the sides together you don't want to sew over your zipper ends so make sure that you start your stitching at the zipper tab you don't stitch at uh, from the beginning to the end of the raw edge just where your zipper tabs and zippers is are go super super slow on the zipper tab you're going to go from four five layers to two layers so you want to go very slow with any machines you're using right now 
whenever you change the, the thickness of the fabric that much, it's highly recommended to stitch very slowly. Grab now your lining piece and match the raw edges. So now you'll have your zipper tape sandwiched in between your main and your waterproof canvas, right sides together. Easy peasy. And you're going to be stitching on top of the initial stitch line. Again, make sure that you don't stitch from uh, the beginning to the end you leave at least a half an inch it's a little bit more than a half an inch on each side so you stitch only where your zipper is including the zipper tabs of course move your zipper pulls away so you get a nicer straight stitch And of course, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. So cute. So cute. See, you have the openings right there on both sides. You're going to top stitch your um, about an eighth of an inch away from the zipper. And again, even for top stitching, you won't start at the raw edge. You'll, start, you'll be top stitching only where the zipper is. That will ensure that it will be a nice, smooth, uh, pr professional looking edge. So adorable. I love the way this is looking so far. And it looks rather big. This is the large option. I believe it will fit an iPad based on how it looks right now. No wonder it's called the big pouch. <laughs> so let's repeat the exact same steps on the other side. Again, grab your main pattern piece Sew it the right sides together to the zipper. And I think I'm going to try this time, hopefully not regret it later. I'm going to try to stitch both layers at the same time. I've done it before and I regretted it, but I'm guessing I'm living by the, the more you practice <laughs> rule. So I'm going to use this opportunity to practice stitching all three layers at the same time. But honestly, between all the pinnings, because I'm not a pinner, like I prefer not to pin. But when I do three layers, I feel like it's needed. So between pinning all three layers and stitching twice, it might be more, uh, less time consuming to actually stitch twice, but hey. I don't know if I've made my, I don't think I've made my disclaimer at the beginning of the video. I am not a professional bag maker. My videos are not meant to replace the videos provided by the designers themselves. So I'm just showing you how I sew my first bag with the trials, with the errors, just so I can show all of you out there that want to uh, get into bag making or garment making there will be videos in my on my channel with garment making i just found myself making more bags lately than garments but i'm hoping next week to post um, a dress that i'm making another strikes that i'm sewing next week and maybe make a video for it like a quick sew along i feel the garment making is much faster than than bag making at least that's what i'm better at for sure so I did stitch them all three at the same time. Now you're going to open that big butterfly, like I like to call it. And you're going to top stitch, just like you did on the other side, making sure that you leave uh, at least half an inch at the beginning and half an inch unstitched at the end for construction. Okay. 
Look at all the rainbow magic. It looks so good. I think I'm gonna make myself a bag like this, but I'm probably gonna have to make uh, the outside with maybe black vinyl or black cork and then put the rainbow accent in the center. Because I don't have enough rainbow vinyl left to make another one just like that. I don't think it would be enough for even the medium size what I have left. Cute. Oh, that is so cute. All right, so that's what it will look like when you finish top stitching. It's a big, big butterfly. Before we create, we start putting the back together, we need to make the D ring connector. This is a piece that it, it the measurement for that piece is in the pattern it's not an actual pattern piece I believe it's three by three or something like that so I'm folding it just like I did the zipper ends so I'm folding it towards the inside and refolding it again so there is no raw edge and now I'm going to stitch all around with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance I am using vinyl for my piece because I just want it to match However, if you're using a domestic sewing machine, I encourage you to use woven for this step as well, because this connector will be placed in between the two layers of vinyl. And uh, it's already an eight layer vinyl plus the two, you're having like 10 layers of vinyl on that side. So I don't know how many domestic machines would be thrilled with this situation so oh, for an industrial it wouldn't be a problem but yeah i recommend a dom uh, woven for a domestic place your connector about one inch you can place it to the front of the bag or to the back of the bag it's it's up to you i i'm putting mine towards the back so where the zipper ends not where the zipper opens and it's one inch lower than uh, where the zipper is currently on one of the sides. All right, so now that is attached, we're going to be creating the bag itself. So we'll start by sewing the main part where the vinyl is in my case, or woven in your case. And we're going to sew all three sides with a half an inch seam allowance. Make sure that at the top you fold the seam allowance from the top where the zipper is and you stitch with the seam allowance folded. This will give you a much, much nicer look. And I find that it is easier to stitch from the end that has from the bottom of the bag versus the zipper side. So your, your presser foot ends where your zipper is, instead of starting with the presser foot where your zipper is, making sure that those two edges are folded. I find that this is a little easier. And again, make sure that you follow the half an inch seam allowance that is included in the pattern. and keep your fingers away from the needle. You're going to be very tempted to keep that folded with your fingers. You could use like a screwdriver to help you if you need to, to press, but just keep your fingers away from the needle. 
I have heard in one of the Facebook groups that I'm in, uh, I don't remember who gave this tip, so I do apologize for not giving her proper credit. Uh, if you stitch two lines of stitching instead of just one, so you take the time to make an additional parallel line to the initial one within the seam allowance, the bag will hold much better because there's less pressure put on the seams. So I'm going to try that, especially with this bag since it's going to uh, be donated to a charity. It's not going to stay in my closet, just looking pretty. Maybe somebody that will use it will buy it. So I'm going to try this technique right now to see if, um, if I like how it looks with the two lines of stitching. Let's repeat the same thing for the other side. Make sure you fold the seam allowance at the zipper and you start sewing from the bottom of the bag towards the top, following a, again a half an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to be repeating on this step, I'm going to be sewing, sewing the two stitches again. And I'll do that for all the lining, for, sorry, for all the uh, vinyl part. I, I don't think there's a need to do it for the lining, but for the vinyl, I will do it. I know it's an extra step and I know it may be redundant, but why not? If it gives my bag a chance to be more resistant and more, uh, and for whoever ends up winning it, to get more use out of it, it's worth the extra two minutes probably to do three extra lines of stitching. All right, so let's stitch the bottom. When sewing the main part of the bag for on the bottom, you'll be doing just a straight stitch from one end to the other. When you'll sew the lining, that's when you'll be leaving an opening to birth the bag but for now just half an inch seam allowance just like you did on the sides from one end to the other it's looking so beautifully and it's really not a hard pattern i find that it is pretty beginner friendly it's uh, it's more than just a rectangle pattern so it has a pretty shape to it but it's not too complicated. There's no uh, binding, there's no uh, drop in lining. So it's definitely some, a pattern that I would encourage you to, uh, to try if you want to dip your toes in bag making right now. And I am a big fan of Imaz patterns. I, I was looking for a crossbody pattern the other, uh, a few months back to use my Forky print. And I found her on Etsy and I made her crossbody and it looked so pretty and I loved it. So I went back right now to see what pouches she has and I saw this one. So I had to get it. All right. Open your zipper. Make sure that you keep your zipper open because you'll need that to birth the bag. And let's repeat the same steps that we just did. But this time we're going to be doing it on the lining part. We'll start with the side seams and of course, uh, keep those um, seam allowances folded in where the zipper is. And again, half an inch seam allowance. Usually with back patterns, the lining is the same size as the main piece. So it's recommended to stitch the seam allowance a hair over the whatever the pattern follows. In this case, this designer, and I love her for that, has separate pattern pieces for the lining. So um, the lining is already a hair, a smidge smaller than the main, and that will help with the bag to look nice and um, nice and um, stretched, you know, on the inside. There is no like puckering on the inside when the lining is a, just a smidge smaller than the exterior of the fat of the bag so in this case keep with the half an inch seam allowance because the designer already made the lining patterns pieces a smidge smaller than than the outside and i love her for that like i hope you check her out on etsy i'm i have no affiliation to to her i don't even know who the designer is be behind the mass patterns but i did like the pattern the tutorial, I like the pattern piece, I like the thought put 
behind creating these patterns. Okay, let's repeat the same thing on the other side. This waterproof canvas is from Walmart, so it may not be the best quality, but it is available at Walmart. I got it for like $5 a yard, but I've seen posts on Facebook where people found it on clearance for a dollar a yard. Like that's crazy for waterproof canvas and it's wide. So I'm hoping my Walmart puts it on clearance soon so I get all colors. So far I just got the, the gray one. All right, so we're going to stitch the bottom part but this time we're going to leave an opening and my uh, advice is to leave a big opening because the bigger the opening, the uh, easier it would be to birth the bag. So I, why torture yourself with an opening that's like four inches wide when you can leave the almost the whole thing open and just do a straight stitch to close it. That's how I see it. So I'm going to stitch maybe about an inch and a half at the bottom an inch and a half at the top and make sure you back stitch at the beginning and at the end of each of these two stitches so now i have my opening that's big enough to birth the bag we have one last step before we birth the bag is to create the four corners so now you're going to press your corners like so matching the raw edges and you're going to be stitching this with a half an inch seam allowance four times you have four corners so um, pretty easy that's uh, this will give the bag that 3d effect although you have two pieces you have a front and a back you don't have a bottom um, piece stitching the corners like that will give you a 3d effect on the bag without having an extra piece one down three more to go so we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side of the lining open it up match the raw edges make sure that your um, seam allowance goes in the same direction so if your seam allowance went towards the left side right there then you will need to make sure that the same seam direction is on this side and stitch it down just like you did previously Alrighty, so you have two down, two to go. Now we're going to move on the vinyl part. And again, same step. And this time I plan on doing the two rows of stitching instead of just the one. But the concept is the same. Open it up, match the raw edges and the side seam with the bottom seam. And stitch it down with a half an inch seam allowance. I find this is the easiest way to get a, a 3D effect on a pouch than to add an extra panel on the bottom. Super cute. Super cute. Okay. And the last one. We're going to be stitching the same thing on the last one. Open it up, match the raw edges. And just like we did for the lining, make sure that the seam allowance goes in the same direction as it did prior. And stitch it down. We are so close to the end. I think this bag is big enough that it could work as a, like a small size crossbody. It's more than just a pouch. And I do think it would be able to fit an iPad in it. We'll see. I'll try it at the end of the video with one of my old iPads. Done. I've sewn the two rows of stitching for extra stability. And now we can birth the bag. It should be pretty easy given that there is no interfacing. Just grab your vinyl through the big opening that we left, pull it through. And before we close 
the bottom opening I highly highly strongly encourage you to check all your seams you can fix your seams very easily if you check them before you stitch it closed if you stitch it closed and you realize you you've missed the stitch or you missed the corner or something you would need to unstitch it so I I prefer to just make sure that everything looks good before I close it so I'm gonna grab my uh, handy dandy poking machine poking tool just to poke out the edges of the zipper where the zipper tab is and this is how you'll see you'll see how pretty it is uh, because we didn't stitch all the way we left that part look how nice it looks that's the key to a good looking bag just to make sure that don't you don't go all the way when you have zipper tabs like that look how pretty it looks gorgeous i'm thinking it looks pretty good the corners look look nicely the bottom looks stitched nicely so i think i think we're good to just close the opening it looks like i haven't missed any stitches so pretty how how bad would it be to bet on it and just to keep it myself it looks really really good and it's pretty big just look at it on my palm all right i'm going to stitch the um, opening closed because i i get very distracted by shiny rainbowy things so i forget that i actually need to finish the bag so grab your lining you can stitch this closed by uh, hand stitching like a blind stitch but i'm not i'm not about to do that never i'm going to stitch it down with my sewing machine i'm just putting some clips and i think i want to add some um, some tags i think i could put a little tag there like a surprise for whoever buys the bag that there's a little tag on the inside I totally forgot to put tags on the outside and I think on the yellow part I could have used like a handmade tag oh well like I said hindsight is 2020 so many other things I could have added to it but maybe on my next one I have these tags from I believe they're all from Mormino more me know.com and uh, oh, look at this i had one for star wars i've made a star wars backpack not too long ago in a sew along you can find it actually here on my channel and in the backstitch back room and that one featured the star wars fabric and that star wars tag would have been awesome for it do you guys have stuff that you buy and you forget you have i feel like this is it for me I'm going to use this one. This is cute. It said I it says I look bigger on the inside because it is a big pouch. It is unexpectedly big. So this is cute. And I'm gonna put it in the on the inside of the bag. So if uh, if you're not a fan of these cute funny tags, you don't have to see it. It's not on the outside. But it will be a nice surprise for whoever ends up with this super cute pouch. I love it. So just stitch the opening close and you're done. This is it. If you've used woven fabric, you can give it a good press right now, a good steam. With the, the vinyl that I've used, I can really press it. So I'm just going to like do a little finger press around the edges. And uh, look how pretty. It's so cute and I'm telling you it's it's big like it's big I'm thinking you could actually put two uh, tabs like this one one on each side add another one on this side on the other side and make a crossbody strap even an adjustable one and it would make like a really cute crossbody bag it's not small at all 
and if you put the card slots that actually come with the pattern I just didn't include them here but there's a card slot tutorial in the pattern to put it on the lining then uh, you can use it like definitely a crossbody you don't need to put a wallet you can put all your cards in there so let's create the wrist strap and this one I'm going to create it just the same way I did back when I did the sewn ideas so along the makeup bag where I made a wrist strap without uh, any specific extra hardware so I'm just using a swivel clasp swivel hook put your swivel hook throughout on the inside of this um, strap before you start sewing so that's the key you're basically folding your raw edges towards the inside like so and then folding one more time and then you're sliding I'll, I'll just hold them in place with a couple of clips and then you're sliding your swivel hook right in there before you stitch it because you're going to create a loop and you're going to stitch it in a loop so your swivel hook needs to be in there already it may be weird if you've never seen this uh, construction before but trust me it, it works just don't stitch anything before you put your swivel hook okay. push it all the way to the center of that strap and then open up the short ends that you just folded open them up and match them right sides together like so and you're going to stitch down right sides together to create a loop easy peasy all right so now that you have your loop open the seam allowances carefully with your fingers because you uh it's it's if you've used woven it would be much easier because these were pre-pressed but since i'm using vinyl these are not pressed so i'm using my fingers to keep the seam allowances opened on both sides and refold everything just like you did before so now you have everything folded and in a loop super 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 cute there you go so it's all folded with the swivel hook inside I'm putting just a couple of clips to make sure it stays in place and we're going to sew around it two times once to close the raw uh, to close the, the open edge and I like to start with that one and one on the other side I like to start right before the seam allowance uh, where, where you sew the loop right there I like to start with my stitching and I'm sewing with uh, an eighth of an inch away from the edge all the way and I tend to back stitch only at the end I back stitch at the beginning I, I don't back stitch at the beginning because I'm using thicker thread and I just overlap a couple of stitches when I get to the end of the loop and back stitch then. This way I don't have too too much. Beautiful. Snip your threads and now you're going to repeat the exact same but on the other side. On the side that has the fold. And of course you will be you are moving your uh, swivel hook as you sew, obviously. But it's easy to, to move it from one side to the other. Ta 
cute, so cute. And such an easy pattern. I might ac actually add some rivets, but you don't have to, honestly. You can uh, leave it as it is. I'll need to see if I have some rainbow rivets left. Maybe add them to the, to the connector and to the strap. So now you want to stitch this strap to make sure that the swivel hook doesn't move. I'm just turning it on the outside because I'm, I have that beautiful rainbow thread in the needle and I have gray thread in the bobbin. So I want that stunning rainbow thread to be on the outside. So I'm stitching right there to uh, hold the hook in place. And I'm, I like to put my seams as close to the hook as, as close to the swivel hook as possible the seam where we close the loop so it doesn't um, annoy me when I wear it on my wrist so get it as close as possible and stitch it down if you're using vinyl and a domestic machine you might be better off just riveting that instead of stitching it because right now you are stitching through eight layers of vinyl so if you want to give your machine a little break, you will be better off just using a rivet instead of uh, of stitching it down. Trim your threads and you are good to go. That was so quick and so easy. Even with the tutorial, uh, it's less than an hour and I find that if I make bags without doing a tutorial, without being filmed, it takes uh, even less. And this time I'm trying this voiceover. We'll see if I like it. Um, you guys are my... Uh, you can tell me if you like the voiceover or not. Like I've, I was um, following some nail tutorial channels. <laughs> that's another passion. And they do all kinds of tutorials with a voiceover. So I figured, okay, I'll try one right now. And this way you won't hear the loud noise of the sewing machine. But I don't know if I, we'll see. I'm just closing the ends right now with, uh, like I'm melting the ends of the thread. So they're flushed with the bag. Even though I snipped them, you can't get too, too close. So this just melts the polyester thread. Beautiful. It is all done. Look how cute it looks. All right, guys, so I grabbed my iPad. I wanted to test if it fits. And I do think it will fit without the cover. I took the cover off because it wasn't really fitting with the cover on. So it is not obviously not meant to hold an iPad in this case because there is no like buffer. I didn't add any uh, foam or anything. But if you want to put an iPad in it, you can. This is an old, old iPad, so probably one of the first generation. So it won't fit if you want the bottom to stay flat, but it will close if you don't mind it sticking out at the bottom a little bit. Obviously, again, it's not meant for an iPad because there's no cushioning or anything, but uh, if you want to, you can. It looks so, so adorable. I am loving this bag so much. Again, this will be up for auction tonight in the weekly auction group in memory of Gwen Edwards on Facebook link as always in the description and uh, thank you so much once again for sewing with me or for watching my videos for subscribing and for commenting and for liking the videos I they don't go on unnoticed and I truly appreciate it I will talk to you guys in my next one bye